Okay, let's do this thing. Monday Night Raw. Monday Night Raw, folks. What do I have to say about this show? This is a go-home show, might I add, too, before the Elimination Chamber this Sunday that's going to go down. But before I begin anything that has to do with Monday Night Raw, number one, I just want to say, check out uh, my NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day review from yesterday. Went about 30 minutes talking about that show. A really great takeover, probably one of the better ones in a while, I should say, too. So go check out uh, my reviews. You want to hear my full thoughts on NXT TakeOver, uh, Vengeance Day and whatnot. So uh, check that out from last night's show. Probably a better show than this tonight. But uh, other than that, I just want to say I did get a couple of these online. Uh, thank you to anybody that sent any type of birthday wish to me uh, throughout this weekend since my birthday was on Saturday and whatnot. So thanks if you did. Uh, but... What does this show, Monday Night Raw, really have to offer as it is a go-home show before the Elimination Chamber this Sunday? We kicked it off with Miz TV as his guest was Drew McIntyre, basically talking about the Elimination Chamber match and talked about why Sheamus, you know, um, kicked him and everything. And as Miz just kept calling, just kept talking and talking, he called him Andy at one point, too. Uh, Drew told him to basically shut the hell up and... um you know, Miz continued to call him Andy, and, you know, I mean no disrespect and, every, and whatnot, but uh, Drew, we end up, uh, you know, this is going to be a warning and whatnot, basically uh, hitting him with the Glasgow kiss, and uh, basically he threw the money in the bank somewhere in the stage so he can cash on him or whatnot, but as Drew left, Miz got up, and he basically said, listen, I might cash in, <clears throat> well, he says, I'm, you know, he can cash in his money in the bank in time, and he says, I'm in control, I'm running this show. And uh, basically, whether it's the WWE title or the Universal title, I will stand in the ring on Sunday as champion. So basically, he took himself out of the Elimination Chamber match uh, because basically he has the Money in the Bank uh, briefcase. So why does he need to be in the um, Elimination Chamber? Which I'm glad he's out of the Elimination Chamber. Let me say that because I'm like, well, he's already got Money in the Bank. So why does he really need to be in it in general? So... At least he's out of it. I never really wanted to see him in there. Listen, I know they're going off of former WWE champions and whatnot, but I don't think anybody really wanted to see the Miz and Elimination Chamber in general. And then again, like I said before, between him and Morrison, they take so many L's. Why was he even in this match to begin with? But at least it's smart saying like, hey, I don't need to be in Elimination Chamber. I could just pick my spot and wait eat it after the, the, you know, the WWE title Elimination Chamber or even... Um, well, I wouldn't say Universal since the title isn't on the line on that, but Miz basically still saying, no, he will be the WWE or Universal Champion. So um, he's some point at some time is going to cash in the money in the bank. But since he's out, who's going to be the replacement now for Miz since he's out of it? Um, next, we got Matt Riddle and um, the Lucha House Party versus the Hurt Business. Uh, Six-man tag here, I should say. Um, <clears throat> Nothing much to take from this. Uh, Riddle and them did get the win. Uh, floating bro off of MVP. Basically right after Bobby Lashley came out and beat up the, um, uh, you know, Lucha House Party. And um, Matt Riddle basically put him in the hurt lock again. Beating the crap out of him. Leaving him on the ground. Um, you know, I will say this. We still got a triple threat match going into uh, Elimination Chamber between Lashley, Keith Lee, and... Uh, Matt Riddle, but Lashley continues to be dominant, basically kicking the shit out of damn near anybody, uh, which, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, kicking the shit out of anybody, I'm almost surprised they don't even have this guy going for the WWE title right now, because Lashley just basically looks dominant, I wouldn't be surprised if he still retained the US title, uh, this Sunday, but I would still like him to go for the WWE title at one point in time, uh, next, Miz basically trying to give a recommendation for his replacement wanting John Morrison in the match, which Adam Pierce, I guess, said he was going to think about it then if he would put him in there. Um, what was next? Bad Bunny. Uh, well, Mandy Rose. Yeah, Mandy Rose went in the back talking about the Royal Rumble. And um, I guess she had a Bad Bunny uh, turn on and whatnot. And uh, basically, uh, Pre showed up. Basically, him and um, Bad Bunny would be an interview then. And talk about me on Saturday Night Live this week. But next thing you know, Kira Tozawa ended up pinning true for the you know, for the 24-7 title. And then, um, what was it? 
Tozawa got knocked down by Priest, or no, he get knocked down and ran into some crates. So Bad Bunny ended up just pinning it Kira Tozawa, and now he is the universe. Why am I saying universal? He is now the twenty four seven champion, folks. So yeah, Bad Bunny, Bad Bunny. I'm sure he'll bring the title on this Saturday on Saturday Night Live. Okay, I'm sure he will. <laughs> Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So, yeah, folks. Um, Bad Bunny is now the 24-7 champion. What do I have to really say from this? Not much. Listen, it, it will never be the hardcore title. <laughs> Let's get that out of the way. It will never be the hardcore championship. So, Bad Bunny, this is just basically promotion. As in, you know, he's just going to take the title on there this Saturday on Saturday Night Live. Which then again, this is the first time we had a WWE title on Saturday Night Live, or I don't know, didn't didn't they face some like wrestle like some Saturday Night Live host on WrestleMania a few years ago? So now we're doing this again. I, I'm not saying we're doing it again, but I swear that happened like a couple years ago or whatnot. But um, yeah, folks, um, got gotta get that 24/7 title on somebody else somehow. Who will be Bad Bunny for it? I have no idea. Um, next though, we did get. New Day in the back, basically uh, talking at him. Pierce says, Kofi said, you know, I'm a former WWE champion. I should be in the match. But Miz basically showed up saying, uh, John Morrison needs to be in it. But uh, New Day basically said, well, John Morrison's never been the WWE champion. And, you know, Miz going, well, he's a former ECW champion. Kofi said, you can't pick any title you want. And, you know, we could get Kofi Mania 2 at Elimination Chamber, which... Um, you know, Miz said, nobody likes sequels. Well, nobody likes the Marine 4, 5, 6, your little Miz and Miz's TV show. He's not got a, got a point, though. Who keeps green lighting these damn Marine movies? I'll never know. But uh kind of had a point right there. Um, Oh, boy, this segment. I'm sure this is one of the segments that everybody's been talking about the whole night. Uh, Charlotte and Asuka versus Peyton Royce and Lacey Evans. Now, there's a lot to say from this. Peyton, um, what was it, um... Lacey Evans came out, cut a promo, talking about Charlotte, you know, talking about she, um, I guess something about the gift, uh, we're like a heart shake candy to Charlotte and everything, just a little piece for her, and that Lacey Evans' gift is going to be the Raw Women's title this Sunday when she wins it from Asuka, but, um, what, what happened here? Okay, basically Peyton Royce wrestled this whole match, because Lacey Evans never got in the ring. And basically, throughout this match, it ended up in a no contest because Lacey Evans dropped off the apron. And basically, as she left with Rick, and uh, she said, you're not putting your hands on me, Charlotte, because I'm pregnant. Of course, Rick does the woo and dances. So, yeah, this ended up being a no contest, folks. And why was this a no contest? Well, we already know why it was a no contest, but apparently... Lacey Evans is pregnant. Now, I'm sure a lot of people are going to say, it, like we've said this before, this is basically the Al Wilson or Tori Wilson, Dawn Marie storyline they did on SmackDown back in 03, 04. And then, I, you know, I guess, hey, man, Lacey Evans, she wanted to ride Space Mountain so bad that she got pregnant. I don't know how Ric Flair is, old, how old he is at this point, but um, I think, dude, I think you got enough kids at this point, okay? Um, now, apparently... Yes, this makes no sense, and trust me, I'm sure, I know people I know, even my co-host was watching the show tonight, he was like, I'm about to turn off Raw, he just didn't want to see it at this point, but apparently, Lacey Evans is pregnant, for real, so, where do you go on from this? At first, I thought this had, this had to do with an angle, or this is some type of a swerve, which is going to lead into Sunday, and still, Lacey Evans is going to be in the match against Asuka, but now I guess they have to get a new opponent for Asuka now since obviously Lacey Evans is not going to be able to wrestle. It will probably be gone for a very long time or they can keep milking this and put her on TV. But yeah, apparently she is pregnant for real. I thought this was just part of the story, but no, this is legit apparently. So, hey, congrats to her and whatnot, uh, but I I don't know where you else you can go on from this. Where Where does this whole story go on now since she is legitimately pregnant or they can just sit there and try to play it up. oh this is rick's kid this is rick's kid even though it's not they could still play up into that if they wanted to but i highly doubt it so i don't know who will face oscar this sunday for the title now but um yeah i'm sure when people first saw this is like where is this going 
Oh, apparently Rick got her pregnant, but now she's pregnant for real with her real husband, I guess. So, um, I, I don't know why they would try to, I, I guess they want to try to book something to make this interesting as a story by using, you know, a real life situation here. So, we'll see where this goes. I can't say I really want to see it, nor do I really care. Uh, but I guess we'll see what happens, but yeah, she's, she's pregnant for real, folks, so I guess she didn't want to ride Space Mountain, but, um, Sheamus was interviewed next, talking about he's the odds-on favorite to win this match, because, uh, you know, he can win this gauntlet match tonight, he'll be the last man in the Elimination Chamber, um, next, Kofi Kingston went against The Miz, not much I can say from here. Kofi won with the Trouble in Paradise. Match was okay. I'll give it that. But, of course, Kofi was going to end up being in the Elimination Chamber anyways. He's a former WWE champion. And it's against Miz. So, it's not like we're ever going to get Morrison into the match at all. Uh, anyway, so, yeah. Kofi, it makes sense that he is a former WWE champion. Okay? Um, next, they interview Lana and Naomi. As they basically talk about they were going for the tag titles. And, you know, talking about the hole and everything. Of course, they promoted Rock's new show, Young Rock, which premieres tomorrow night. I may check that out um, to see what happens on there. Um, Randy Orton was cutting a, in the back, cutting a promo, talking about uh, he's going after the WWE title again and the interference from Sheamus last week. But in his Gauntlet match tonight, he said he's going to be, uh, I guess, still, you know, the last man in the Elimination Chamber. But before he can continue. Alexa Bliss was in the back basically doing some type of a ritual or cult satanic bullshit. I don't even really know. Basically, she's going to resurrect the fiend. I thought she would have been on show let on the show last week, but apparently the reason why Alexa Bliss um was not on TV last week apparently is because of that whole stalking thing that's going on line with her right now on Twitter, which I don't know. This guy has like multiple accounts. I don't know what's going on with that, but I think he's still stalking. I know someone would say, oh, we got his account suspended. He ended up making another account. I will say seriously, though, it is some scary shit and whatnot because apparently this guy keeps saying he's outside her house and threatening, what, um, her fiance or something like that. So um, at least she's back on TV, but I guess the story was that she didn't um, show up last week because of this whole stalker thing that's going on. Uh, Shayna, Bl Shayna Baszler went against, uh, like, wow, I'm fucking up on names tonight. Shayna Baszler went against Lana. Why did this match go, di why did this match go past a minute? Why? Why? Who watched this for even five minutes? Why am I supposed to believe Lana can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Shayna Baszler? The point is, Shayna Baszler won, carefully clutch, good, sh went too damn long. Should have never went that long. Um, Braun Strowman, who was back after having some blood infection, what I read, Basically, he won an Elimination Chamber match, but he's a former Universal Champion, not a WWE Champion. And I guess he's going to have a talk with Shane McMahon um, about this whole situation. But in the main event, which was obviously the best thing of the show, was the gauntlet match with all six of the Elimination Chamber um, participants to see who was going to be the last one in there. We did kick it off with AJ Styles, who came out cutting a promo. Um talking about he can't lose the numbers on his side this is a warm-up tonight he even talked about his uh, lawyer joseph park aka abyss and whatnot uh saying that he cannot lose uh the first two in there though was aj styles and um kofi kingston obviously kofi wrestled earlier tonight so aj i kind of figured he was going to win anyways the phenomenal forearm next was him and drew which was actually one of the better parts of this match i probably was um very um i wouldn't even say better parts but well, it was. This is like one of the better parts I liked up. I've said that three times now, but um, I did like the back and forth between Drew and um, AJ. Drew ended up getting the um, Claymore kick on AJ, um, so he basically moved on. Um, what was next uh, after AJ Styles? Um, I, I liked how he dodged the, the phenomenal forearm and basically rolled it and got him into a Claymore kick then. Jeff Hardy was next then after that, going against McIntyre. Jeff, he ended up getting a twist of fate. But um, Drew ended up dodging the swan time. Basically um, hit him with a Claymore kick after that. Beating Jeff Hardy in. Randy Orton came out. But as soon as they went to commercial, uh, they came back from commercial. Randy was on the outside of the ring. And then that's what they did with the whole Bliss thing. And she surrounded the entire arena on multiple video screens in the Thunderdome. Which was probably the fastest 10 count I've ever seen. Because it wasn't even 10. So Orton lost by distraction or via count out. 
And uh, he got Claymore kicked out the ring then. And his final entrance was Sheamus. Sheamus ended up attacking Drew from behind. Um, basically back and forth a little between both of these two. But Sheamus... Hmm. Sheamus ended up dodging the uh, Claymore kick and coming back with a bro kick, winning the match. Right after the match, though, uh, Sheamus basically said he's going to be the final entrant in the Elimination Chamber and say he's going to be the WWE Champion and beat Drew McIntyre and proved everybody it wasn't a fluke victory. Uh, listen, overall, the only match you could really talk about tonight was this gauntlet match, which is probably the best thing to keep everybody's interest in this show because the rest of it... Uh, this show was just still bad. Then, as everybody else would say, Raw is probably like the worst, um, the worst show between all three of these things. Between NXT and uh, SmackDown, Raw is probably the worst one, or probably the worst wrestling show in general out of any company when you think about it, too. But uh, yeah, the Gauntlet match was the only thing that saved Monday Night Raw tonight. I don't need to see Lana trying to go any type of level against Shayna Baszler. Um, the Fiend Orton stuff. I, I'm just past it at this point. I don't. I don't need to see that. Um, at least Miz is out of the chamber. Don't mind that. Um, wow. Well, what what else was on Monday Night Raw? The sh the show was bad. It was bad. <laughs> yeah. The um. What what was it? The um. Hmm. The Lacey Evans, Ric Flair, Charlotte thing, which, you know, it's funny. My friend Steven even um, said this tonight that <laughs> it's kind of funny uh, what when she was facing Bailey and Sasha talking about being a role model, especially for a kid. Now she's on Raw uh, trying to ride Space Mountain with the Nature Boy and is apparently now, uh, you know, quote unquote, pregnant by Ric Flair now. Well, apparently, we don't think so. It was never said, but um, that's what it looks like they're playing into now or just taking other people's uh, mans around here. Okay, so, yeah, where does that role model thing really go into at this point? But I have no idea where this Lacey Evan thing is about to go, and I guess they need a new opponent for Asuka this Sunday for the title, which, by the way, is playing really second fiddle in this whole story, and she's the champion. So I guess they'll have an opponent for it this Sunday, I guess, so we'll see what happens. But, yeah, uh, Raw, this was bad. Other than the Gauntlet match, I repeated it. This is a go-home show, folks. This is a go-home. So, uh, yeah. Other than that, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, at Hood 90 We will have a review of Elimination Chamber this Sunday. Check out my review of NXT TakeOver, Vengeance Day from yesterday. And we will be back tomorrow night to talk about Impact and, of course, a little bit of No Surrender. And the debut of Juice Robinson and David Finley from New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, going into Impact. So, other than that... I am done with this review of Raw. So, uh, yeah, I'm out of here. See you guys later. Peace.